Hey folks, uh, got this in the mail today. It is the World at War counterattack little expansion, which is double packaged, which is nice. And this uh, goes with uh, the untold stories and into the breach. There's our cover. Now, uh, that's, that's actually a cool picture. That is a, uh, looks like it's a, uh, well, it's obviously an M1, but we've seen this picture previously on other covers. What they've done here is just added a, a uh, it's called a cartoon effect, basically. I forget what the exact terminology is. <coughs> All right, let's see what we got here. Nice paper stock. Now that looks like a tank out of a PC game, doesn't it? <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, this is, uh, now if you're familiar with the uh, Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just a little distracted here. If you're familiar with the counterattack uh, offering, you'll know that there's two campaigns in here and uh, they're, they're linked together. Um, and I'll just read this to you. The first, first four scenarios of counterattack can be played as standalone entities without the campaign rules below. The first five work better as linked campaigns. I guess it means linked uh, scenarios. <coughs> if you prefer. So there's some rules here for uh, the, the process. Two, three pages of rules. How to win. Got the hello ground rule in there. Got some refitting rules which is uh, going to allow you probably to call back, yeah, uh, refit units and uh, you know flip them from reduced to full strength based on how well you win. Uh, improved skill capabilities. And then you've got each scenario. And I really like the paper here on this. This paper is, uh, it's not too glossy, first of all. So one of the one of the big problems I have had in the past is, uh, with World at War uh, product, is often the paper's too glossy. Uh, and this is nice. Everything's kind of bullet pointed out different units we're supposed to be using, which maps we use. Are these maps labeled? Let me see if they're labeled. Okay, so it says Blood and Bridges map. Well, maybe it's Blood and Bridges and Tuz. I think it is t uh, Blood and Bridges, you know? Yeah, Blood and Bridges and, uh, and uh, Into the Breach. Okay, so more scenarios. Trying not to bump my... Uh, my guys here, <coughs> my game that I've got set up. Steckler, this is the second campaign. I really like the images in here too. Now the map, let's see what the map is all about. It's a one page map. I'm curious about the black edges. I wonder why that is. But it's a pretty densely, dense terrain on a map. Let me just see if I can find some information about it. Looks like the first time it's used is scenario four, the beginning of the Steckler campaign, the little red writing hood scenario. So maybe this is a standalone map. You know what? I bet it is a standalone map uh, because it has no, no roads or any matching terrain. That's pretty interesting. Let's see what the story says. Second scenario is also played on that map. <coughs> wow, there's quite a few special rules for the second scenario. There's a page here of different, uh, what the different parts of the terrain do. It's just explaining the terrain on this map. On this particular map, the orchards and stone walls and things like that. Well, I'm assuming whether they're obstructed or not. And then we have uh, the counters. Uh, skill counters. 
And these are actually uh, lock and load counters. Huh. And here we go, here's... Uh, these are more counters for the... Uh, for World of War. Yeah, you look like... I sound like I'm confused, it's because I am. I'm gonna have to check and see what the deal is here. I think, yeah, obviously these are... This is gonna be used for America, not America Conquered, but for uh, scenarios uh, that are upcoming in one of the magazines, I'm assuming. And then I'm not sure who these guys are. What That looks like a Vietnamese unit almost. There's a star behind the back of that guy. Can you see that? Let me see. And these are, these look like, uh, oh, I think I know what these are. Wasn't there a scenario released for the um, American Werewolf or something like that? Where uh, Wolverines, whatever it's called. Anyway, I'm crapping on here. Anyway, six minutes, so that's probably long enough. These are the four counters that are used in the game. And then I guess these other four here are also used in the game. <clears throat> and we'll work it out from there, because I really have no idea. I just uh, ordered this because it had additional scenarios. And this is the key thing that I like about... Uh, I like about World at War. It's not necessarily that uh, there's lots of maps and lots of counters. That's nice. I really think that World of War has got more than enough formations. Uh, what I like is the the stories and the threads that uh, Mark and his folks create. And the, the uh, theme that comes out of those is just always one that is so desperate for both sides. And uh, it's very entertaining. So I, I'm happy to pay uh, you know, 20 or $23 or whatever this was for this full color. Uh, Gizmo and all the, the scenarios, which is where I think the intellectual property is in this this series, because it's really easy to replicate uh, or copy a game like this and make something similar. But it's very difficult, very difficult to create the uh, the story uh, attached to the scenarios and weave them together in a, in a credible way. I, I, that's one of the things I like most about. Uh, Walker's uh, universes that he creates. Uh, so anyway, all good stuff. Uh, we'll look forward to getting uh, these on the table in the near future, and we'll see how things go. And I'll, uh, I'll when I find out some more about these guys, I'll let you know. <laughs>